Hi, um, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Sophia, and I'm a junior here at Gallatin studying human rights, post-colonialism, and law. Um, particularly, I'm interested in understanding the role that the law has had in creating and upholding structures of inequality, as well as the law's potential, if any, to dismantle these systems. Um, I take a specific interest in the American carceral state and the criminal justice system, and in seeking out this fellowship, I wanted to pursue that interest in a way that was centered around those who have been directly impacted. Thus, my work with the Freedom Agenda. Um, the Freedom Agenda is a project that arose out of the fight to close Rikers Island. It's a sub-project within the Urban Justice Center here in New York. As I mentioned, the Freedom Agenda is centered around the voices of those directly impacted, which means that the majority of their efforts are focused on uplifting the voices of formerly incarcerated people and their families. The Freedom Agenda and its members work to demand the human rights of those incarcerated and those undergoing reentry. It seeks divestment of resources from systems of punishment back into communities most hurt by incarceration, as well as broader system transformation. The actual substance of their work and the work that I took part in during my time with them over the summer involved direct community organizing efforts through monthly membership meetings, direct action nights to involve a wider community, um, rallies, information sessions, as well as sending out resources. So as I mentioned, the Freedom Agenda arose out of the fight to close Rikers Island. Um, and they are currently reimagining incarceration in a post-Rikers world. So there's a plan right now to close Rikers Island by 2027, which means that we're in desperate need of alternatives that ensure that any new plan will follow and uphold human rights as outlined in New York City and state laws, as well as broader human rights frameworks like the Declaration for Human Rights. Um, so for those of you who don't know, this is what Rikers Island look like, looks like. You can ignore all the little bullet points, but there are 10 facilities on Rikers as well as a boat that were all built to house 14,700 people. Um, at points though, it has held upwards of 15,000 people there. Um, as of March this year, 90% of those people were being held pretrial and hadn't been convicted of a crime. That significantly undermines their Fifth Amendment presumption of innocence, as well as their 14th Amendment rights to due process. This year, 16 people have died in Bureau of, Prison Bureau of Prison custody at Rikers Island, which is the same number of people who died there last year, which suggests an increase in risk factors like abuse, violence, neglect, and untreated mental um, health issues. In 2014, a Department of Justice investigation found a pattern and practice of excessive force and violence at New York City jails on Rikers Island, citing that DOC staff are unnecessarily violent and that they rely too heavily on punitive segregation as a disciplinary measure. Generally speaking, on Rikers Island, incarcerated individuals do not have access to their basic human rights, such as clean food, sanitary conditions, or adequate health service, and it's a place with little to no functional oversight or accountability. Um, yeah. Some framing questions I had as I went into my work are up there. Um, but the actual bulk of my work was centered around canvassing parole offices, neighborhoods, and rancher services in Queens, Manhattan, and the Bronx, as well as organizing and attending rallies. Um, and really, we were trying to inform our community and the broader New York City community about the effort to close Rikers Island and imagine jails that are more humane and whether or not that even exists. As well as this summer, a particular effort to pass intro number 549, which is a bill proposed by city council that aims to theoretically, I will emphasize, um, limit the number of hours people are able to be held in solitary confinement in New York City jails. Um, that's me. <laughs> this was an incredibly impactful experience for me and my understanding of how to navigate system transformation, particularly through community organizing. A large takeaway is that there is no legislation without community organizing efforts, and that pressure that comes from within communities is essential in holding our larger systems accountable. Further, this work taught me that to even question how one can fight oppression day in and day out is an immense privilege. Those directly impacted by incarceration oftentimes have no choice but to challenge the system on a daily basis, which has significantly informed the way that I hope to continue on in this work. Um, thank you very much. I will pass it off.